Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Folks, we've got a show for you today. And as you know, we're talking about elections big time. This is huge, huge, huge. I was out there on the road. I, I was just chilling with, ch- chatting with, uh, with, with, <coughs> with Art here for a moment. I'm a little out of my breath for a moment. But anyway, I just got back from the VA. Just got back from the VA, and I got some services from the VA. I was taking another trooper down there. And all of a sudden, they checked me out with the old blood pressure thing. They said, oh, Bruce, you got you to come on in here, too. So I'm sitting up there, and the next thing in there, because I just gotten, I just gotten a pacemaker not too long ago. And come to find out, uh, I had a couple of... Uh, a blood clot sitting up in there, and so they they looked at me, checked me out, you know, and I think they had a, I think they had a shot. You know, I I had this needle or whatever, and they they had little Jack Daniels in there. And only only for Marines would they do that, mm-hmm. see. And they shot me up real quick, and and all of a sudden here I am sitting up here with you. Good. Okay, we got a show to that. Okay, well look, folks, as as I indicated to you before, on a serious note, we've got quite a show today, and and as you know, I'm sure you've got. I, I normally I would have my my uh, my ballot with me. I still haven't voted yet. I still haven't voted yet. I, I pretty well decided what the race was going to be about um, several months ago. And, uh, and then I'm going to give you the whole rationale now. I mean, some things have happened since I, since I last, um, uh, since I talked to you about, about the endorsement. But I'll just briefly say, because for, the, for this whole hour, I'll make sure that we understand where, 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 where I'll be coming from and what the show, where the show is going to be. But, um, but as a, as a Republican during that particular time, I was the engagement chair, thanks to Art, thanks to Art, and uh, also I was a, 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 a veteran or a vet, vet outreach coordinator, basically trying to talk to vets about their benefits and this, that, and the other with the VA and whatever. So anyway, we did that for a while, and, and after a while, uh, things started happening. My friend Art was chairman of the Republican Party, and, and I met him through the Oregonian, and uh, and that was quite an interesting uh, interesting relationship that we've built since, since then, and what I mean by that is that uh, I was at one point in time was the chairman of the of the minority outreach committee, and, uh, and 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 also as part of the vet situation too, but after I met Art, he gave me another designee, which I thought was a very progressive one. He called me. He he he, uh, he endorsed me or. Uh, basically gave me a job being the engagement chair. And, uh, and I'll let, let Art speak a little bit more about that part. But it was very interesting. Then it really got very interesting and all. And I got out there and talked to everybody for that matter. Mm-hmm. And so the whole issue of race, which was a very interesting piece at this point in time, because Obama was the president. Obama's the president of the United States, and we needed to talk about the issue of race. But it was a, it was a more progressive move because now all of a sudden we're talking about the solution. How do we get out of that arena and become all Americans at the end of the day? Art left the party, not necessarily left the party, but anyway, he, he had other responsibilities. He's running for he's running for Congress, still a Republican, out in Josephine County, and he's, he's running against uh, that's DeFazio, and uh, he's been on the show uh, uh, several times, a number of times, and the reason why he's on the show, uh, and, and because he happens to be out there on the other end, uh, down in Southern Oregon, is because he took the opportunity to come down here and see what Multnomah County in Portland was, the most liberal area in the state of Oregon. And we took, I took him around, and he met folks. He shook hands. He met, he met African Americans. He met Hispanics. He met, he met whites. He, he talked to homeless folks. He, he did the whole nine yard, and I was very appreciative to that. And, um, and he, saw, he saw the worth and whatever, and especially the education. Because as you know, I've been touting on this, on this show for from, from many, many times that um, we have the lowest, we have the highest, we have the highest failure rate in Portland public schools in the state of Oregon, and uh, and that's a very interesting piece also too. And Art jumped on that, and he and because of his background and whatever, he really brought a lot of stuff to the table, which basically helped uh, the show, the Oregon Voters Digest, educating people about the worth and the solutions, if you will, to our education system. So we want to thank him for that too. So. What we're going to do the first hour, the first half hour, we're going to let Art speak, and I'm not going to speak at this point in time. We're going to let Art speak about giving us an update, really an update. He's not a newcomer to the show, but an update in terms of where he is right now, uh, having run, he's running for office, 
where he is at this point in time, what do you think is the most um, uh, most the issue that he, he maybe one or two of the platform issues that he feels is most important as far as his campaign is concerned. And then the second half half hour, I'm going to have a we're going to have a Democrat on it. You know, John Sweeney, you've been knowing John for a long time, too. He's a Democrat. And we're going to talk about the national race and some of the issues because it does relate, if you will, to i.e. a person like Art. Once he wins, once he's in office, he's got to basically sit at the table with everybody and, and, and share his ideas and, and, and for his solutions uh, to our education problem that we have in the country. And he's got a lot to say about that piece. So that's going to be the show. First 30 minutes, we're going to talk to Art a little bit about his uh, his campaign and, and the things that he's been doing. And then the second half hour, we're going to talk. We're going to bring John in, and we're just going to just have a general discussion. Welcome again, bud. All right. Good job, by the way. Yeah, I like that. This is nice. That's really neat. Really neat. Really neat. Getting a lot of traction. And I noticed you got a you got quite a lobbyist with you. A hard-nosed lobbyist there. I mean, hard-nosed. Get you out there. Get you out there before the mm. public, because I know you're getting them through mine also, lobbyist, too. I don't deal with You got lobbyists. a lobbyist. Well, you get a lobbyist, a, a, spoke, a spokesperson, a, an activist out there working and putting your fo putting your face out anyway, there. Anyway, let's talk for a minute. Kay. Yeah. Her name is Kay. You know Kay? Yeah, she All does All right. She's Facebook. good people. She Solid. does our Facebook page. She what now? She does she what? She does our Facebook Okay, page. good. She does a good job, so she does a darn Let good job. Let me mention something about talk this. Talk to me. This engagement versus outreach. Talk you know, to me, yes. When I asked you, when I was chair of the party, and right. asked you to be an engagement chair, it's a very important distinction. We have uh, these political parties, they go along and they say, they mostly say white people in the room, they right. say, well, we have to go and outreach to the African Americans. And that's the wrong approach. That's not the approach they take with their people. When the chair goes down to a county, he says, hey, find some good candidates for office. I went to all the counties as part of my job, and I said, you guys have to get us the best candidates you can. And if you can't find a good candidate, you have to run. But when they go to Multnomah County and to the African-American part, they say, uh, well, we want to outreach to you people. And that's ridiculous. You should go there and say, we want your candidates. And that's engagement. You want them to be choosing candidates and bringing them to the political process the same as everybody else. Until you can look past this nonsense about the color of your skin, uh, you're going to fail. I can't imagine anything that's more failing than to have somebody go down to the African-American community and say, I'm here to outreach to you people. That's absurd. You say, we want your candidates. I'm here just like I'm everywhere else. And you have to get their candidates because mm -hmm. every community is different and mm -hmm. you need candidates from every community. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the nation, of course, has a lot more problems than that one. Mm -hmm. uh, our country is bankrupt. Mm -hmm. Government is bankrupt. Uh, its foreign policy is bankrupt, as well as its bank account being bankrupt. We need to fix that before it, it really is mm -hmm. damaging. Mm -hmm. It's already damaging District 4. It's one of the reasons I'm running. I've run for three times before, and I've won a majority in every rural county in District 4. Mm -hmm. Not winning in Lane and Benton counties, because they have great universities there that are still bringing huge amounts of money to the communities, and they're relatively prosperous. The rest of District 4 is in very bad economic shape because their congressmen basically deserted them and their industries and they lost their access to natural resources and so on. And the country as a whole, the uh, real income of Americans has been going down for 20 years. It's a disaster. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, those economic problems have to be solved. Uh, but in the national scene, this fight between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump but excuse me, but before you go in that yeah. arena, I want to I want to get back to the state here. Yeah. I want you to know one of the things I, I was really impressed with you, and the reason why I'm saying it, I've always tried to get you yeah. here, is because you responded to a lot of the major issues yeah. of facing this state as it relates to minorities in this state, yeah. from an education standpoint, yeah. the high unemployment rates. Well, let's talk about education. Rates. Yeah, but but the point the point I'm making is that, but I know both of you. Yeah, I knew the guy that was there before, and I now knew you. Uh -huh. But the fact of the matter is. Uh, you've got a lot to say about solutions mm -hmm. and uh, and know what the un and understands the problem but the moment you put R next to your name mm -hmm. no one wants to talk to you well no there are a lot of people who talk to no, me but I'm just saying but, but you understand me but from the standpoint of media from the standpoint well, let of media, me talk for a second about education yeah but what mm -hmm. about I want to talk to you a little bit about this communication piece why is it that the media can't want to talk to you you've got the solutions well, the media talks to me I mean I, they interview me and so forth that's not a problem the media however, uh, sort of filters, filters things because they tend to side with the Democrats, so they 
they look for things in what I say that they can use against me, okay. but they talk to me. Okay, but I'm saying that when you say Republican in the front of a very legitimate person like yourself, as opposed to Democrat, mm -hmm. for say, you've got the solution, but they will go to the Democrat who is who is non-productive, mm -hmm. doesn't want to deal with the issues, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and just leave it alone. Then you're not given the opportunity to speak up and share with, with the public, if you will, about the solutions. Well, we, we, How do we, we solve this problem? It's just that uh, each segment of the society is, uh, has its own political biases. And we're seeing, of course, in the presidential campaign, a very good demonstration of the media. Basically, 99% of the media has made it clear they want the Democrat elected. And uh, with that in their minds, uh, you get a little different hearing when you talk to the media. But I'm, I'm, but not, here, not, I'm not running against the media. I'm running against the Democrats. Yeah, but the fact of the matter is, in order to be able to communicate to yeah. the people, to let the people know who to vote for, because that's, we're, 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 we're yeah. independents, if you will, the media need to at least give you as equal time well, about the deal. And I'm, I've not seen it, well, with respect, other than the Oregon but, Voters Digest. You see, Bruce, listen for a minute. You're trying to save a constitutional republic on a playing field that's very uneven. Okay. In many ways it's unfair. Okay. And in many ways it's unbalanced. It's like any, you've been in a war, you know. Bat, the battlefield is always, not always designed for your side. But we don't have a choice of battlefield. We just have a choice. We'll try to save the republic on the battlefield we've got. Complaining about the battlefield is not so important as learning how to win on it, regardless of the fact that it is not always a fair place to fight. Mm -hmm. And so right now we're trying to, especially in the presidential race, couldn't be more important, we're trying to win a strike a blow for the republic against the statist forces that are trying to suppress and change our country away from a constitutional republic. Mm -hmm. We don't have a genius running, we don't have a man that walks on water, will fix everything, but we have a man who has more principles than the other side and we're trying to elect him. Okay. Well, I guess I'm, I'm still making my point here. You can You're see still the guy. Mad at the media. The, 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 you see, you have to understand. This but man you're is the a very. Media. You're running this program, that's right. That's exactly where I'm running the show. <laughs> the bottom line is very simple. This man is a very honest, very straightforward individual, and he does have solutions. I want to bring it back to the state because we have the same similar problem in the state of Oregon. And I'll just be right up front with you. It's pretty well nationally known about the divide with the Republican Party. We, we've got folks who are, in fact, they use the term, if you will, an outsider, and then i.e. the, 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 the so-called, uh, what, what, what do you call it, the establishment aspect of it. Mm -hmm. He is not an establishment person, if you will. He's an outsider. This guy has never even run for office before and then he said, then, until he sat down in a meeting and said, well, gee whiz, I've got to get involved because I see these issues running around. So we have a divide here with the Republican Party here within the state of Oregon. So it's nothing different, my point. And he's still running. Not even, only did he run the first time around, he ran the first time around, and then he ran for chairman of the Republican Party, well, which I thought was interesting. Sort of accidentally. Became yeah, accidentally. But you got involved. It was an accident. Yeah, but you see, he got involved, <laughs> but besides getting I involved... Get and I should ask my insurance company to reimburse I hear you. me. But, but, but the other thing about this, thing, I've been in the party for a long, long, long time, sitting right here in Multnomah County with my aura, and I, I was fighting day in and day out, and the same thing, and I'd run for office and whatever. But he's a guy that was doing the same thing, but he stayed. Not only did he stay in the Republican Party, he, he was the chairman of the Republican Party, and he still ran, and I'll be straight up with you, and even though he's not getting the support that he's getting with the but establishment of the Republican Party, he's still saying, I'm going to do something in this state, and I, I, we, I, I applaud you for that. Trust well, me. Well, you see, during the Cold War, we worked on civil defense. We were fortunate it was never needed, and it wasn't very popular either, but you had to keep working because it was in part important part of the war effort. Okay. And uh, the same thing is true this. In this case, uh, you don't win every battle, and the battle you choose to but go But you into. stayed there. Why did you, why did you just keep, give, give us that feeling about what, what keeps giving you the enthusiasm? Well, I'm for not enthusiastic right because I would be more enthusiastic if my country was in better shape. And then I could do my science and education work and, uh, and not get involved in politics. But uh, when the situation becomes dire enough for your nation, then you say, well, what little bit can I do to help? And we're trying to do a little bit to help. And you're going to continue to doing something for you, trying to, trying to create this togetherness, if you will, as far as the party, the state of Oregon's well, Republican talk about Party? about education for a second. But what about the state of Oregon, or Oregon Republican? Are you going to work, still continue to work with these folks? I, the grassroots Republicans are great. Those are the people I'm working with. Okay. And okay. Uh, 
the institutions of any institution, Democrat institutions, Republican institutions, they're made of people and they have their problems, but that's not the problem today. The problem today is winning elections. Yeah, you know, you know I know that, but we need that support. And I'm going to get you to talk about We want Republicans, we want, we want them to vote for you and also Democrats. Will, I'm, I'm but going to get it's you about to talk about education. I, mean, I am. That is an issue. Okay, let's, all right. I'm, see, he's such a nice guy. You know, I'm the activist. I'm the guy that's supposed to get him out there because he should be elected. In the, he should be a congressman from the state of Oregon. Okay, we got and everybody the, should yeah, vote. I understand that. Here we got it right here. No, not necessarily. <laughs> Going on. Let's All talk right. about this issue. What well, do you think? What is education what do you think? is a serious problem. When I went to school, our K two twelve schools were the best in the in the world. The test our students tested the best in the world. Today they test at the bottom, and uh, it's it's uneven. Some communities still have good schools, but on average our schools are suffering, and they're suffering not because of the teachers, not because of the students, and not because the taxpayers aren't giving them money. They're suffering because a large unionized bureaucratic elite has seized control of our schools and is operating them for their benefit rather than for the students benefit that's what's happening uh, that's happening to many of our institutions but in education it's having a specially telling effect <laughs> let me illustrate uh, you mentioned oregon schools yeah. having difficulties but let's look at the worst the worst schools in this country are in washington dc washington dc has fifty thousand young people in the K-12 schools. 67% are African Americans, 17% Hispanic, and the rest largely minorities too. They're minority mm -hmm. students. 50,000 young people. Most of those students aren't even learning to read. Mm -hmm. And in Washington, D.C., if you want to go there, you can see the congressmen and senators strutting around town in their suits, looking very important, getting on TV and walking through the streets and so forth. Walking through the streets with them are a lot of young people that aren't even being taught to read. And you know who's responsible for those schools? They are, because under the Constitution, the D.C. schools are the responsibility of the United States Congress. The schools in Oregon are the responsibility of our state, because the Constitution under the Tenth Amendment leaves education to the states and the people. But in D.C., it's Congress. Congress is responsible, and yet they're the worst schools in the country. It's not money. $450,000 is appropriated every year for every 30 student classroom for nine months in the DC schools, 450 k 450,000 for a teacher, a room, and 30 students for nine months. And yet the schools, the students aren't learning. 40% drop out and the rest average fifth grade reading skills. And the reason for this is that money doesn't reach the classroom. You think those teachers are earning $300,000? No. It doesn't reach the classroom because of this giant bureaucratic union elite of politicians, bureaucrats, etc., who take a lot of that money as it goes past. A small amount reaches the classroom along with all the rules these people make to make it harder for the teacher to teach. We have that problem in Oregon, too. 360000 is the number for Portland schools. And for general schools in Oregon, it's 300,000. My opinion is that if you're a congressman and when you walk through the streets of your community, the schools that you are responsible for mm -hmm. not teaching the kids to read, mm -hmm. you've got a problem close to home you ought to solve mm -hmm. before you start telling the people in the country how to mm -hmm. run their schools. Mm -hmm. And it's not hard to solve. Uh, all you have to do is clear the deadwood out of the way, send that lump money to the classroom, get the best educators in the country in there mm -hmm. to revise the curriculum. Mm -hmm. And I think over the summer months, you could turn those into the best schools in the country. You can do it. There's not a thing wrong with the students. Mm -hmm. We have vast amounts of information on the education ability of people. And the minority students have exactly the same performance as the majority students, white, mm -hmm. Hispanic, uh, African-American, all of them. Your uh, have the same uh, performance when they're given the same opportunities. Mm -hmm. So right at the heart of our Congress, the guys that are trying to tell us to use Common Core or our president and that whole crowd in Washington, their own schools are a mess. They ought to fix those. And if I was elected to Congress, that's the first thing I do is fight on those because I've, I've, I've look, I taught at UC San Diego and Stanford. My family's provided curriculum and books for 100,000 kids and Five of my six kids have doctorates. We know education, mm -hmm. but we don't know how to f make the political process push us back to the days when our schools were the best in the world. Mm -hmm. 
but they used to be run by the teachers. Mm -hmm. My mother and my uncle were both school teachers, mm -hmm. K through 12 teachers. My uncle comes back from the war, he's in the Navy, he comes back from the war, he's in rural Iowa, he becomes a teacher, he's teaching a full load of classes. They gave him a few bucks extra to be superintendent of schools. That's it. Mm -hmm. That was all the administration. Mm -hmm. One of the teachers would give him a few bucks extra on his paycheck and he administered the schools. The teachers and the students and the parents ran the schools, mm -hmm. not a bunch of mm -hmm. high-paid bureaucrats. And today, we have plenty of money. 300000 for a classroom is pretty good. Here in Oregon. In, well, that's across the nation. That's the average in Oregon. Oregon's about the average. Portland's a little higher at 360 and Washington, D.C. at 450. And you know what happens? I'll tell you what happened in D.C. The Republicans realized this a little bit. The Congress did. So a few years ago, they, start, they brought up some bills to try to improve the D.C. schools. And they did pass, and they did improve them a little bit. But you know who voted against every improvement? Our congressman, Pete DeFazio. And the reason he voted against the improvements is not because he's against students. It's because he wants union support at election time, and the unions didn't want those changes made. They were happy with what they had. But what about the kids in in, your, in, in, in in district number four? In district four? What about district, well, majority in, in all district well, white four, kids. I mean, what, well, how's he, we how have, does he relate to that? We have some excellent schools and some poor schools. You have some poor schools. But on the average, we have this, uh, this average, which is sunk from best in the world down to about 40th in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and if we don't educate our youth, uh, our country is in trouble. It's in trouble for a lot of reasons. But there's another thing about this. Not only, all politicians talk education. Even Pete DeFazio talks it while he votes against Yeah, the but they're group. failing. I mean, well, they why, why does he see it keep men there? Politics. Well, why does he keep men there? But they also, when they do propose to do something, it's sort of gradual. Oh, we'll improve things a little. Yeah. We'll, we'll make this a little better, or this a okay. little better. Okay. What about the fact there are 50 million kids there, and you've got to improve those students quick, or they're not going to get the benefit of it? Hmm. Are you going to say, well, we'll make improvements. You know, it's a political process. I like the schools. We'll give them a little more money. We'll do a little this and that. Those schools have to be fixed now. You notice I mentioned fixing the D.C. schools in one three-month summer. Yeah, you mentioned that. Fire the people that are screwing those schools up, get the best people in there, and start teaching. Mm -hmm. Not because D.C. schools directly affect Oregon students, but if that example is set in our nation's capital and we show how it can be done there, then the state of Oregon might apply the same example here. Okay, okay. But they, they, we have two things. We've we'll let this, this mob, which is really hurting us everywhere, you know, mm -hmm. in all mm -hmm. aspects of our... You talk to businessmen, they'll tell you the same thing. The bureaucrats in the yeah. unions are killing them. The, the, uh, we've let this mob get control of our country and start to enslave us all. Mm -hmm. The same mob that got control of our schools. You've got to kick these people out, and we kick them out now because what about the kids that are in there now? Mm -hmm. I would like to help the kids that are in the D.C. schools now, not the next batch 10 years from now after we make it a little better. I think Oregon schools should be reformed overnight, too. Same it way. is unacceptable for this, us to have students that aren't being educated. And listen, I know. I've educated 100,000 K-12 through students through our curriculum and books. Right. I've taught large numbers of students at the universities, graduate, undergraduate, postdoctoral mm -hmm. students, my own students, excel. I know how to fix these schools. And so do a lot of other people. In fact, a lot of politicians know. It's on the agenda. I'll put it down. I'm interested in education. And I'll throw a few bucks at it and maybe put in a bill to make myself look good. Mm -hmm. And I really would like it to improve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But mainly, I want to get reelected. But you know what? Again, going talking to Oregon and your district aspect mm -hmm. of it, and you did take the and time. there are some excellent schools in the district. Yeah, but, but you but did. But not all. But, but again, you allowed, allowed, there's yeah. some problems there, too. Yeah. But also, you've taken the time to go in someone else's district, which is in Multnomah County and Portland, the yeah. Earl Blumenau deal. That's right. And We've then been interviewing the, the school board here. Two of them That's already. right. You've, been, you, you've yeah. gotten involved in that whole process. Yeah. And uh, and and I want the people to know that you've done that. And it's those men, important. you know, on the school board, they're nice men, but you know, they're getting four hundred and fifty thousand per class per year. And the first thing both of them said was they needed more money. <laughs> well, so that's a uh, uh, a problem everywhere, but it's a problem our nation has. You know, slavery. Let's go back to that for a minute. Slavery, two hundred years ago, was throughout the world. You got on the wrong boat in the Mediterranean, you'd wind up enslaved in Africa for the rest of your life. It didn't matter what color you were. Mm -hmm. Slavery was a, a way of life throughout the world. 
and it was a bad thing. The British banned slavery throughout their colonies, which was the greatest, single greatest move against slavery in those days. And we just missed out. We threw the British out just before they did that. So mm -hmm. we had to fight our own problem. Mm -hmm. But uh, slavery as such is gradually disappearing. But instead, we're getting enslavement by this elite that is, is attacking our constitutional republic and our constitutional freedoms. So a man is free can't take a businessman in District 4 and uh, send him down in chains to work on a plantation, but you can sure take away his economic freedom by taxing and regulating him to death, so he sits mm -hmm. there having to try to try to do something mm -hmm. and can't. Uh, as we depart from the rules of our republic, we move back to the rules that were more common hundreds of years ago in which people were not free. And that lack of freedom not only affects our our, our, our happiness, you know, mm -hmm. our way of life, mm -hmm. it affects all the institutions that keep us free. Mm -hmm. And moreover, as it affects our country as a whole, mm -hmm. it diminishes our chances of even retaining the freedoms we have because there are some very large totalitarian forces in the world that our country needs to be protected okay. against, and that's not happening either. L let me ask you a question in regards to, again, Oregon. Uh, the Democrats actually changed the, the whole concept of who was the leading proponent of the whole educational system uh, within this state when they basically did away with the superintendent of school, which basically ran throughout the state, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, run. Well, they made now, a lot now of the governor, the governor now is the superintendent, so to speak. What do you think about that system? Well, it's not working because okay. under the governor is still this vast mass of non-teaching people mm -hmm. who hurt us in two ways. One, of course, it uses up money. And secondly, they don't take their money and go to Tahiti. They stay in the schools telling everybody what to do and continuing to screw up the curricula and the, and the, uh, the programs. Uh, I mean, I think that uh, we should have teachers, students, buildings, and parents like we used to have. And we shouldn't have a lot of un non-teaching people hanging around. I don't care whether they work for the governor or work for the superintendent. It's the same problem. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you cannot expect these schools to thrive when the money goes through other hands that then dictate how the schools will be run. And Not all it, teachers are perfect. You had a okay. wonderful man from the school board on here last time we were yeah, here, yeah. and he was a teacher. Mm -hmm. The only teacher on the Portland time, yeah, school, time, but yeah. the only one. Yeah, yeah. All yeah, the rest yeah. of them don't even they don't even have experience teaching. Yeah, okay, okay. Now going back to that same point in regards to the point I made in regards to how they changed that whole system, yeah. and uh, it's my it's my understanding that um, uh, Congressman De DeFazio supported that system. In fact, he was part and parcel of the makeup. He signed he's part off. And parcel he of signed this off. Whole progressive he's, enslavement he's, of the exactly. American people. And so we got thirty again. years. He's been spending money we don't have. Okay. To buy votes okay. so that he can take away the freedom of the mm -hmm. American people. Mm -hmm. And that's what his policies have been. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. we want to discuss them in mm -hmm. detail, we can. And, and I guess I must, I must, I must remind the, the viewing audience here in regards to the statement that you just made, mm -hmm. that remember now, when we first started this whole issue of, the, of, the, of this campaign piece, mm -hmm. they asked the public, what do you feel about Congress? <laughs> And they gave them a 12 percent down. Yeah, but the funny down. thing is, you know, Congress gives them a 9 percent approval rating, and then all these guys go home and lie to their constituents about what they've been doing, and the people buy it and put them right back in office. But it's not just the people's problem, because when they come back, that guy brings about $5 million worth of resources into every campaign. Mm -hmm. He uses tax money to send flyers out all year, every year, comes back here, the unions support him, the press supports him. The, uh, and he gets huge amounts of money from the special interests that he gave our tax money to in Washington. So when one of those congressmen comes home, he's got five or ten million dollars to spend going up against the actual dollars in his campaign and then the value of all these other interests. And the co challengers go up against them. They don't have those resources. And that's mm -hmm. really the problem, not just here, but all over so, the So the point I would ask you, what do you say to the viewing audience? Who should they vote for this time around? For Congress and District Four, yes. they should vote for Robinson. I, you got it, folks. You got it right from the man. Get <laughs> him in, in the there. Country, and, get him in there. And in the mm -hmm. national election, Leave, they look. should vote for Mr. Trump. And that no, is not, be, not, not because Mr. Trump's 
can I finish? No, I'm no, the game finished. We're, 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 we're closing. We're closing. <laughs> we'll hit you on the next half. We'll hit you on the next half. Hit you on the next half. I want you to stick to your campaign okay, right now. You should okay, vote for fine. Robinson. Real, so there you go. Vote for Please Robinson. Do it. Point the finger. There it is yeah, right there. If you're in Portland, right. not my district, come down and vote anyway. I, okay. I'm, I'm just as there you go. Tell them to call down the call down to your district and vote. Okay, good. Okay, sounds good. Hey, we're going to be right back. We'll be right back, and we got another exciting half hour for you. Take care. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. <laughs> oh, John goes in there. Okay, ready to go. Gee whiz, look like I'm having small talk. I mean, we get we're getting so excited. We brought John on, and he, we really started getting into conversation. Welcome back, folks, to Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Prasad, your host. In fact, today I'm going to even give him a title today. My co-host is John Sweeney. You've seen him before. John's a Democrat. Just to make sure we we got equality here, we're balancing this this whole conversation aspect of it. John's run for office. Like yep. I've run for office. In fact, John even ran for Congress. He he ran for Congress in Walden's area one one to one term, right? I did that, yeah. He sure did that. In fact, had I known had I known that that that, that process was in place, I, I would have ran against DeFazio as a Democrat. I re registered as a Democrat and ran under under that ticket. Well, that would have been a fun deal. Well, you know, my son Matthew changed his registration and ran against DeFazio in did? his primary. Oh wow! Yeah, he got fifteen percent in the district, twenty percent in Josephine Gee, County. Was, I remember when I we, we were talking about it, but it never <laughs> dawned on me. But see, he lived in the same district. Yeah. I didn't realize I should have called John hey, up. They were freaked out. They were freaked I out. I know they were freaked out. Boy, that would have been. Well, wouldn't that have been a freak? Out if Bruce Broussard is a Democrat running against DeFazio, wouldn't that have been fun in, well, the, in, the, in the primary? All the voters are just Americans. And, oh, is that right? And, and, oh, and, and, gee. And it's, uh, very, gee. it's a privilege to try for their votes. I hear that. Well, hey, folks, we're making small talk right now, but in all due respect, uh, this is a very critical time for those of you who haven't voted. I mean, I hope you enjoy the show, and we're just trying to educate you and inform you. These are our opinions, if you will, but we're trying to give you the facts and give you some, a sense of, of how you can relate if you will, to why you're voting. It's very important. We're in very critical times at this point in time. Well, what we're going to do this time around, we're going to talk about something that's very excited at this point in time, the presidential race. I mean, it's huge right now. We've got, we've got, uh, we got one outsider. His name is Donald Trump. And uh, the Republican Party picked him up on his ticket, on that ticket. Mm -hmm. And so he's an outsider. The insider, if you will, the establishment is, is, uh, is Hillary Clinton. Uh, Hillary Clinton. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton and uh, and 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 Bill, basically running together. I call it a husband and wife team. I mean, what what the heck? I mean, he was he was prior, prior president of these United States at one point in time. But it's an interesting it's an interesting race. And in all due respect, this is the this is the race of the women. Women the women want to be recognized, and they want to they want they want to be represented, if you will. They figure well, if a if a minority can be president, should not a woman be president of the United States? And that's okay. But, the, but we're still dealt, we're still dealing with the issues at hand. We got problems in this country, and we need to have so we need we need to talk about solutions and who can handle that seat. Okay, and that's where we are. And so now, so now that you know what that's all about, uh, now the thing is that who do we pick? I mean, do, do we say okay, fine, 
how do we satisfy the women of America? Because in all due respect, they had their issues too. There's the Voting Rights Act for them and a whole bunch of other goodies. And, if it, and at times they felt they were second class. They really were at, point, at one point in time. Because in this country, when we first got together in this country, in all due respect, you had to be a white male and own property. Way back when, after, they, after, after we beat the, 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 the homeland, if you will. That's what it was. But you had to own property. It wasn't about all white males. The majority of the white males didn't own nothing. See, but, but, but my point is that's the way it was. And that whole system of government just kept going, going on, going on. And all of a sudden, everybody started making their strides and this, that, and the other. And now here we are today, and we've got, uh, uh, we, we've got Americans. We've got Americans, and we're still striving for that point. But the woman feel, feels that she should also be identified as president of these United States. Bang. So we got that peace aspect of it. But then we got all of the other problems that we have here, and that's sticking out there. So the key is that here, we comes, here comes Donald Trump. Who is an outsider? He's a businessman aspect of it, a, a conservative kind of a guy aspect of it. But he's an outsider, and then so now you got the outsider running against, i.e., a, uh, a an establishment person who happens to be a woman. That's the issue that we're dealing with now today. So so now now we got to make that selection and we got to vote accordingly. So we're going to have this discussion and I mean we're going to get some opinion. We're going to go around the table and talk about that and see how we feel about that. The first person I'm going to ask the question to is the Democrat. I want to give him equal time. So you happen to be an R and I happen to be an R too. So what do you think, John? I'm a lifelong Democrat and I'm voting for Donald Trump. Okay, okay. And What's your rationale for that? Well, <clears throat> the uh, the Clintons are just too corrupt. And, uh, you know, they talk a good show, but a lot of the whispers on, well, it's actually shouting on the internet is about the fact that that when if Hillary gets in there, the Social Security will be raped, mm -hmm. and the fact that uh, just recently there's a scream about the um, the director of the FBI has now reopened the event, <coughs> and there's three uh, theories. So the, share, share with them what you know that this event. The, the one the one theory is On the emails right that were hacked. Right. If you will. Uh, they, they were hacked, and uh, they're coming out with more and more, and they're and they're on other other computers, and this is like. Uh, a lot of little boys in the dark room think that they're all alone, and when they touch the buttons and send send it, it's out there forever. That's right. And anyway, the um, the first theory uh, is the fact that the director of the FBI is is worried about his reputation, mm -hmm. and the fact that uh, he has been called by uh, uh, FBI agents around. Uh, the city around the country as being a dirty cop. Some of his employees. <laughs> That's some of his employees, ex-employees are speaking louder, and so he wants to save his reputation and the reputation of the FBI is coming out there. In fact, the attorney general is having a real hissy fit over it. But um, this is going to really come out because this is really important. Um, you know, they get on these magic. Toys and the deal is they think that they could just do anything. Now, when I first joined the National Guard and, and they got into the communications, I hated it. But the deal is, you want to send a message to somebody, the best way is by messenger. Second is by wire, then by radio. And the cell phones and and most of your um, email communications goes over the internet through the uh, satellites and all that, and it's easy to catch. In fact, if you look in the, the White House and in the Pentagon and all that, when they're on a phone, they're on a corded phone, okay. and it's wire all the way. Okay. All right, what do you think about that? Have you been keeping up with that piece? What was it? Oh, what, what's sure, what's right. your opinion? What's your I opinion? think it'd be great to have a woman as president. Okay. And there are 150 million women in this country that would be better president than Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. There are more than 150 million in the country that allows for the people that happen to be in jail. And what's, and so your, forth. <laughs> what, what's your rationale behind the statement that you just made? Uh, well, uh, as I think he's laid it out pretty clearly, uh, this woman is not honest. And she, not only is she not honest, she has been in a position of power as Secretary of State and also as the First Lady, uh, you know, advising her. Right? But let's take her alone. As Secretary of State, she has done a great many dishonest things she's gotten a lot of good men killed and she has uh, violated she can't even keep 
normal confidentiality of the uh, military and uh, economic secrets what, what was of this that? country. What, where did that come from? As far as, for the, we got well, the, there, lay, the, the lay people here now. We know now, now what you mean. she put our country's uh, secrets. Uh, it's not secrets, it's okay. strategy. Right. We won't say, we don't have to be secret, strategy. Uh, our country has competitors in the world, mm -hmm. uh, and they're serious competitors. And as Secretary of State, the Secretary of State is the main person, our main interface with those competitors. Mm -hmm. And this woman uh, let all of the strategic information mm -hmm. that we, our, our government had with respect to winning those competitions mm -hmm. and staying in the game in the United States out into a place where they could all read it. Mm -hmm. uh, she couldn't even obey ordinary confidentiality rules. Plus, she advocated policies that are very dangerous. Uh, and we now know, I mean, it came out the other day, the conversation of her saying, well, gee, I'm sorry that went that way. We should have gotten in there and, and rigged their election. She wanted to rig an election in Palestine. I mean, this woman is not honest. Plus, as Secretary of State, she's shown that when she's given power, she misuses it and has absolutely no respect for uh, the institutions that enable our country to be a reasonable competitor in the world. Mm -hmm. And you want to make her president? It's, it's crazy. An ordinary American housewife, I'm, I'm not demeaning housewives, my wife was a housewife and also a very good scientist, but any ordinary American woman could sit there and use some common sense and obey the ordinary rules and with some good advisors, I think, make a, a credible president. Mm -hmm because the Constitution is pretty simple to read, and most of the decisions are common sense. Mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton, I don't know whether she ever read the Constitution, and she does not act with common sense, but we, or we, with common honesty, or with common decency. Okay, well, we do agree that the Democratic Party selected her to be their, their candidate yeah. for president. Yeah, I know like they did. That of that, like that of Donald Trump, yeah. the Republican Party. Yeah. I he allowed him, if you were as an outsider, yes. to be the nominee. But this for is the an Republican accomplished. Party. This is an accomplished man. In his field, he has many accomplishments. Okay. And what one of the strategies, the strategy of the Democrats, in the, especially Hillary, has been to keep the issues from being discussed, one slam after another for all kinds of extraneous reasons. It, it, every day, there's another slam of their mm -hmm. opponent. Uh, if you read in the National Review, they lay out the 15 main policy positions of Donald Trump. Okay. They're pretty good, and if he got a third of them done, he'd be a good president. Uh, Hillary doesn't do that. She just is it's just a scandal a minute, you know. She wants to claim that he did this and that and the other. Uh, nothing about the issues. The issues are not discussed. But this is standard about... strategy. I faced this strategy with DeFazio. He didn't want to talk about the issues. He wanted to, he wanted to tell lies about me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But uh, so it's a standard strategy. But when you're running for president, it's very unprincipled. Okay. And, but uh, spend a little bit more time about Donald Trump. What's okay. your rationale in terms of to the point? You okay. why would why you support Donald Trump and why mainly I support him because of his stand on the issues. Okay. Okay. Uh, he has a very good uh, uh, understanding of economic and uh, in what way? Yeah, give me give him some basic. Well, uh, he he wants to uh, control taxation, diminish regulation, not get away with it, get rid of it, but diminish it. He wants to take the government. He wants the government to function to do its jobs under the Constitution. Mm -hmm. He's proposed good constitutional lawyers for the Supreme Court. He honors the Constitution. He's not an ideologue about it. He doesn't talk about it all the time. But he wants uh, the government to permit free Americans to do what they've always done before, build a more and more prosperous country. And as a businessman, he has been more and more suppressed by those forces, so he understands exactly what the op opposition is. Uh, and he's, so you want to put it this way, our, not, our people aren't perfect. This man has actually gotten skyscrapers built in New York City. And if you know the culture of New York yeah, City, yeah, yeah. you know that's, that's no world. playground yeah, for novices that's, that's or right. for nice guys. That's right. and, and it's not going to be a nice guy that can fix our country. But uh, the people are supporting him because they know the country's in trouble. They know they're in trouble. They don't think he's going to do everything perfectly. But they want a man in there who's a patriot who cares about the nation and has shown that he can go into tough circumstances where it's hard to succeed and succeed. Mm -hmm. She wants to advertise his failures. A man who tries to do things has many failures. 
and I'm sure he has some. I do. I'm a scientist. A lot of my hypotheses weren't mm -hmm. right. I had to mm -hmm. disprove them to something mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. But the uh, uh, mainly, they see there a productive man who has shown enough good judgment that he's accomplished some things, who honors the Constitution, who honors the basic institutions of the country, at least he, and if you look at his family, it's a good family, those are nice people. Mm -hmm. They're affluent, you know, they're wealthy, mm -hmm. they live a different life than you and me, but uh, they don't think he's perfect at all. They just think he's tough and he's on our side. And he is four square against the things that have been suppressing American freedom. Uh, he has a lot of rough edges, but men with rough edges get things done. Well, he's, he's an outsider. I mean, well, he's know, an outsider, you know, too, and the insiders are, are, are wrecking our lives. So the people... Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, excuse the French. Even the, established, in the, even the established Republican Party and the Democratic Party That's both right. in both that 10%, the other 90% of the people, if you will, mm -hmm. are saying we want change. And I want to tell you something about this. See that over there? It says Art Robinson for Congress. Mm -hmm. You know what I spent six hours doing yesterday? Mm -hmm. Talk to me waving Trump signs <laughs> on the streets of Josephine County. Uh, it's far more important that we fix this presidency than that anybody gets into Congress. Let's get, let's get John in. John, you, you kind of got a feel for where, 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 where Art was coming from. How about yourself? I mean, it was sort of expected that as a Democrat, you know, everybody's got to be in line and uh, you vote for, for the candidate of the Democratic Party. <clears throat> well, the uh, Democratic Party and, the, and uh, Hillary Clinton uh, rigged the election against Bernie Sanders because I was for Bernie Sanders mm -hmm. in the primary and figuring that uh, if he got the nomination and he got the presidency uh, some reality would come to him because he's from Vermont and I think in some of the issues that the Democratic Party uh, foster bring forth that he has a little trouble with because I think the deal is jumping up to uh, be on the gun control uh, bandwagon is a little tough when he looks at what happens in uh, Vermont, which is a uh, state with the least gun control laws of all. You know, one of the first um, states where you uh, can carry a concealed handgun for without a permit. You're a law-abiding citizen. You're all set. And it's just that <clears throat> what I hear about the Clintons is not not good. And the fact is that. Uh, the, the TPP is the things that she's really for because that's uh, the trade. You the educate trade, the you folks know, the, the trade. Well, forget the the, the uh, trade partnership, whatever it is. And but the one we had before, what was it? What was that nomenclature? The trade before. Well, what, was, was what was it? The what was NAFTA, the and, the Gat NAFTA. Gat and all we that. Had NAFTA, but it's the same thing, so right. to speak. So, and this, if if that goes in, the thing is, then we're going to be going back to the 1890s because there are a lot of people who want to go back to the 1890s. And in the 1890s, 10 percent of the people owned 90 percent of the stuff. Mm -hmm. So, and that would not be good for us. And this would get back to a quasi-slave system because most people would not have anything. You know, um, the in the English world, in England and Australia and all that, you know, most of the people they live uh, cradle to the grave in a rented flat. Mm -hmm. They don't own anything. And in fact, I remember when I was a kid one time uh, at a um, movie house, and they had these uh, visitors from Europe, and they came over and he says, well, what do you think of the United States? He says, well, you know, this is a screwy country. You know, he says, um, school teachers own a house, truck driver owns a house, <laughs> and a janitor owns a car. <laughs> and I'm thinking, wait a minute. You know? <laughs> Think, wait that's a minute. Exactly. That's a heck of a way of doing it oh, that way. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> and, and the other thing, the... the the, uh, the the gun control people, I remember in, a, in another theater in Detroit, a couple of policemen went up to an apartment and it had a booby trap, the thing, blew these poor policemen all the smithereens. Then the chief of police is calling for gun control. What? They weren't shot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Bill Clinton did a eulogy for a, for a police officer who was killed in a traffic accident. And he calls for gun control. This police <laughs> officer was killed in a traffic accident. So it's just, you know, they're just lying because they don't affect criminals. You know, uh, if, in fact, the feds say when they catch some, some bad guy or bad gal, let's not let say felons, turn them over to, to the feds. They will prosecute them. And the jurisdictions that do that have a lower crime because the people who are felons, they don't want to touch a gun because they know the feds will get them five years and they're gone. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's get in. We got about we got about another ten minutes at most. You know, he's eight. right. I want to second. I, gotta, I, I gotta want to second him. He's right about he's right the trade okay. treaties. All right. <laughs> okay. He's right about those trade right. treaties. That's I'm you. against them too. Now, one other mentioned thing that was mentioned is kind of like sits on the table right off the bat, and people tend not to want to even talk about the issue. We got to divide in this country. Mm -hmm. We got to divide in this country in regards to race. Race was a big factor, if you will, in, mm -hmm. in regards to what we're doing now too. At the same time. What, are we, any, what, what kind of input can we talk about with reference to, we got this divide, even whoever wins, the other entity is still going to be there. Now, so I'm saying we, we, we're not going to really solve this, this presidential race for eight years. Let's put it that way. There's going to be, you know what I'm saying, we got two different entities. So whoever wins, the other, the other group that didn't win are going to be basically lobbying. So we're going to have two presidents at the same time. You don't know which one is which. But the bottom line, let's have some discussion about this divide. One, how do you think it came about, and two, what do you think are solutions? Want to start on with that, Art? Well, uh, first we've got to have our leaders stop promoting racism. Okay. okay. The, these top Democrats, like Hillary and, and uh, even our president, they're already promoting racism. They promote racism all the time. They always talk about it all the time. You know, after the Civil War, uh, the finest men, there were many fine African Americans, but there's Booker T. Washington, George, George Washington Carver, built Tuskegee University. The students built with their own hands. Those men taught excellence. They didn't teach race. They said to their students, you learn something, accomplish something, uh, be a, a productive member of your community, nobody's going to notice the color of your skin. They didn't preach racism. Racism, to the degree we have a problem today, is mostly coming from our politicians because they, some of these people think that they can gather together the people of a race and tell them because they're a separate race that they're being mistreated because of the color of their skin. The racism that I see is being promoted by professional racists or professional politicians. The, po the Democrats keep, keep, keep lying to the, the African-American people, saying that all the white people are against them. Mm -hmm. Racism was dying out in the United States after the war. The issue was settled on a legal matter, and men like Carver and Washington and so forth were teaching their people, okay, fine, you're free. Use your freedom like everybody else does. And then we got this class of people that came in, and we still have them, especially Mrs. Clinton and her group, that promote racism because mm -hmm. they think they can win elections with it. Let's go back one moment. Did, 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 did you bring up this subject with DeFazio? Did he ever, did you ever talk, was there any we've, opportunity? We've debated a lot of things. He's told, well, it came up because the, first, up? the moment I started to run for office, they called me racist. Huh, okay. That's the standard Democrat ploy. Yeah, I was okay. a racist. Yeah. The, the Coos Bay world suddenly wrote articles about how I was a racist. Mm -hmm. I've got a racist bone in my body. I know you're not. But, but, <laughs> but, but that's standard politics. And so suddenly I'm fighting the fact that they're claiming I'm a racist. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The Democrats do that, mm -hmm. and DeFazio's people did it. Mm -hmm. Now, I never heard DeFazio call me racist. Well, they worked for him. But the people working for him <laughs> had stuff all over the state okay. that Robinson's just another Republican Jesus, racist. Jesus. That's what they do. Wow. And you know, one of the, they, they had a book. They said a book we published. published a lot of books for kids. And they found one statement by a white man in that book about unsophisticated black Africans, natives, mm -hmm. from, and he was a character from the 1800s in the book, and said, I published a book that allowed this guy to make this statement. He said they were kind of childlike, the people he saw in Africa. They ignored the fact that the central thing in the book is a 30-page soliloquy of a black man who succeeded during that era, and he's the hero of the book. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But they went over the book, found this white man making this mm -hmm. little comment, and Headlines in the Coos Bay World, Robinson, racist, he published a racist book. If you read the book, it's like Mark Twain. But, but you know, in all due respect, if had you had R in the front of your name, uh, a D in the front of your name, Democrat, yeah. it wouldn't be an issue. No, no, I wouldn't be a racist. <laughs> let's, get, let's get him in before we, we got five more minutes here. <laughs> okay, okay be, be quick, we got five right. minutes. The, the deal is that you have, have uh, organizations uh, that, that uh, are promoting that because they want that. You know, if you don't know history, you're doomed to relive it. So the thing is that they keep a lot of people in the dark. You know, you have the the uh, Mexican organizations, they want their people held back. The you know, black organizations, you know, they're perpetuating this. Because, you know, uh, the first through the fourth grade, I went to Giles Lake School out there in northwest Portland. And it was, the student body was half white and half black. 
And in fact, in the third grade, had a had a buddy. He was came in there, and he's going to be the first one in his family to finish high school. He was 16 years old in the third grade. Anyway, the deal is, uh, you know, into the into the 50s, you know, if somebody shot somebody that was black, if there wasn't a policeman to see it, they, the report was. Uh, Assaulted or murdered by person or persons unknown. They didn't try to solve it. Yeah. But now the deal is somebody that's anybody that gets gets shot or assaulted, they try to solve that crime. Mm -hmm. So it has improved. And this is the thing is that they're not looking at. Is is it perfect? No. Is it better? It's a lot better. And the thing is that uh, but they want to go back to, to per, perpetuate this racism, racism to bring it back up. Well Rather, tell me this. Well tell me this. You remember the Democratic Party? I know you go to a lot of the meetings and whatever. Yeah. And you all, and the Democratic Party have all the blacks. Okay. Are how are they treated in the Democratic Party? Well, they're kind of in the clique, and I wear brown sandals so the stains don't show and the stuff flows through. <laughs> oh, gee. Oh, gee, John. John, you, you, you. I think you, he and I would start a new John, party. No, John, John, John's a one of a kind. John's a one. But my point is that, no, I guess the point I'm making is that, uh, in all due respect, the, the both parties, in all due respect, especially more the Democrats, they just sort of t take it for granted that the D's represent the black folks, and a lot of black folks mm -hmm. identify uh, identify with, <laughs> with the Democratic Party, thinking they are. But that's another issue. And by the way, I'm going to have a show just on that. We're just going to have one hour just talking about just who really represents African Americans right. in this or black Americans in the state in, in this country. Okay, mm -hmm. that's a very very important piece. So look, we got about uh, another three or four minutes. I'd like to kind of maybe come up with some closing statements, and we're going to spend a little bit more time on uh, on art right here, and and talk a little bit art about just a little closing statement. You know, these this is it. This is kind of like the final major week, if you will. And these folks are out there. There's some of them. Some of them are Republicans. You never know. Sometimes you got even Republicans that will vote Democrat, or Democrats will vote Republicans. But the bottom line is that I would like to give you a couple minutes or so to just kind of share with them real briefly why they should vote for you, real quick, like. Well, I represent the. Well, we got one minute. We got one minute. Go on. Sorry about uh, that. I, I represent the common man, the constitutional republic. More. I'm not an insider. I'm an outsider, and that's why a lot of the politicians don't like me. Yes, yes. Uh, but they should vote for the, the best man in each office, vote for people who talk about the people rather than the politics, and please, please, please don't give us Hillary Clinton as a president. Okay, okay. Vote for Donald Trump. And if you were going to vote for our, if you have to vote for one or the other, always vote for Trump. Forget Robinson; he's irrelevant compared to the presidency. Well, the one I want him to but vote please for. Please vote for me too. Yeah, but the one I want him to vote is Art Robinson. You, Art you, Robinson. you might know Robinson, but I know Art Robinson. Yeah, Art Robinson. There okay. he is, Remember right that? there. Gotta, Pretty good picture. Took a lot of pictures <laughs> to get one to look good, but that one sounds, that sounds great. Okay. Well, folks, that's the show. Please get together with your with, with your neighbors and this, that, and the other, and talk about this. I mean, these are opinions, you know. Share your thoughts because we're all we're all creatures of our exposure, right? Remember that. Take care. Have a good one. I'll see you next week. We'll have some more discussion. Maybe Art might come in and do the clothes piece. Okay. Take care, guys. Have a good one. Take care. All right. Good job.